Yes, Cody is not finishing the story. We're getting Roman Reigns versus The Rock instead. And it's hard to explain how I feel about it. On one hand, sure, I wanna see The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania once in a lifetime. On the other hand, while I know it happened because CM Punk got injured, it just makes Cody's victory at Royal Rumble pointless, and it makes Cody look like the biggest pushover of the century. <laughs> look how happy this man is. That is the fakest smile I've ever seen in my life. This was based basically Cody on SmackDown. Like realistically, why would he do that? Why would he choose Seth Rollins over Roman Reigns, someone that he's been chasing for, I don't know, a couple of years now? Well, I know why it's all happening. It just made Cody look, well, not that important, I guess. Let's just say Cody joined the club of The Rock, ruined my WrestleMania moment. <laughs> and look, again, I can't wait for the match. I know the visual is going to be great. The Rock versus Roman Reigns. I get it. It's just that at this point, we all thought, it's happening next year and Royal Rumble's ending kinda, well, confirmed it. We're getting Roman versus Cody Rhodes. Here's what pisses me off the most and some of that is out of WWE's control. WrestleMania 40 was supposed to be really big. CM Punk main events, WrestleMania possibly wins the championship. That is not happening. So maybe Drew McIntyre is going to win the championship. Well, that is not happening anymore. Cody Rhodes finishes the story and finally becomes the WWE champion. That is not happening anymore. So instead of all of these big changes, big moments, we're going to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns, where Roman Reigns just retains the championship and nothing changes. That's that's really unfortunate. So, of course, I want to welcome you back to Greatness of SmackDown. That was a really good show. Like, this SmackDown was packed. For better or worse, it was a very eventful show. So, I want to talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. Like, subscribe if you already didn't. Love you, my friend, the maniacs. And before that, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Wrestling GM, where you can actually prove that you can book it better. Wrestling GM is the best wrestling simulation game in the world. The only game where you can be a business owner, TV show writer, and universe creator at the same time. Big who fights, who, who becomes champion, manage each wrestler's career, write your own storylines and feuds, and even create your own wrestlers and companies. Find out why 250k plus players continually keep playing wrestling wrestling GM. The game is very deep and the opportunities to play it are endless. It is the perfect mix of creativity and strategy. You can control and create all the outcomes within the game. I also played this game before on my channel. The playlist of Wrestling GM series is in the description below. Wrestling GM is available on all iOS and Android devices and there's a link to download the game in the description below. So welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing today? Lots to talk about, very, very mixed feelings, I get it, I understand what is happening, doesn't mean that I can't feel a bit disappointed and I just feel like it's not the right time to do Roman vs. Rock. I gotta say, I like the presentation of WWE lately now that Kevin Dunn left. It seems like every show starts a little bit differently. We get to see people backstage, not in the ring attires. It just feels different. It feels like every show is a little bit different. And also, I like that now when we get replays, we don't get any graphics. It's just full replay on display. The show kicks off with Logan Paul. So Logan Paul brags about retaining the United States Championship. He's one of the toughest people on the roster. He mocked Seth Rollins and CM Punk for their respective injuries. We see Kevin Owens and obviously Kevin Owens wants another opportunity. Logan Paul does want to defend the championship but not against Kevin Owens. The brass knuckles were a setup and Owens fell for it. Logan Paul does not want to face Kevin Owens and says you should focus on your match against Austin Theory. So we got Kevin Owens versus Austin Theory and every time I see Austin Austin Theory in the ring, man, he's so good. I, I think he's honestly underrated at this point, and it's kind of unfortunate that he was supposed to be the next big thing, and, you know, it was kind of taken away from him. He probably wasn't ready, but I still believe he is the future of the WWE. He's really good. So we got the match in which, as you can imagine, Kevin Owens won. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting Kevin Owens versus Logan Paul at Elimination Chamber, because, I mean, at the end of the day, who else? I believe LA Knight is coming for that championship at WrestleMania. It's pretty obvious now. Logan Paul got chastened by Kevin Owens, and Logan Paul claims, I want to be a defending champion, however, anyone but Kevin Owens. And Nick Aldis has an idea. So does that mean he's defending the championship at Elimination Chamber or SmackDown? Because defending the championship on SmackDown 
is the definition of a fighting champion in my opinion. Santos Escobar talked about how they want to eliminate LWO as we jump into a fatal four-way championship qualifier match. I don't like these matches, you guys know why, because two people in the ring, bunch of tag teams, I know how it might make sense but it's just confusing and it's a mess and you sometimes you forget who's legal and you get the idea. However, this was an exception in my opinion. This was so, so entertaining that I kind of forgot about it and I just watched a bunch of cool ass shit happening in the ring. So, uh, kudos to WWE, I guess. This was some great ass shit. And of course, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate won the match. We're gonna get a match like this on Raw as well. And then these two teams will face off and I believe at Elimination Chamber face the Judgment Day. So, uh, pretty good shit. You know, it just goes to show you how many tag teams do we have. And uh, I think the division is really healthy. So damage control are talking a lot of shit behind Bailey's back and it seems like Bailey well, she gets it and it seems like Bailey is hurting. Now, everything that is happening with Bailey, what happened on this show was amazing. So, Bailey talks about who is she going to pick. We see Adam Pierce, we see Nick Aldis, we see Damage Control in the ring, and Damage Control are giggling, kind of making fun of Bailey. She could choose Rhea, but then she talked about how I understand why you're laughing. She started talking in Japanese, so apparently Bailey understood every word when they were talking behind her back, or well, in front of her because they thought she doesn't understand. Well, she does, and she's heard that she basically got betrayed by Damage Control. These women were her friends. It was a plan to eliminate Bailey anyway, so we got a big brawl and uh, Bailey chooses Io Sky at WrestleMania. I think it was obvious, but it was very well done. You sympathize with Bailey. She was a heel just a couple of weeks ago, and now you're behind her. She looks like a babyface again. Because at the end of the day, yes, she was a mean girl, you know, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, she was a good friend and she got betrayed and we sympathize with that shit. I think this is going to be Bailey's year. What a well done segment. We got the final testament brawl with Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. So this was not a match, but I absolutely love this because for the first time, something with Karrion Cross actually made me interested in what's happening just a bunch of big ass talented dudes brawling and uh bfab came back so she's going to be like their scarlet which is pretty interesting and i believe this is the match we're going to see at elimination chamber which is good and as much as i like bobby and the street profits they're absolutely amazing and they they're so over you know it's kind of crazy i really think karian's faction need to win this because my man lost a lot my man lost a lot and uh bobby doesn't have as much to gain like this is Almost the last chance for Karrion Cross. This needs to work. We see Braun Breaker backstage. He was about to sign with SmackDown, but Adam Pearce lures him into coming to Raw. So we don't know where Braun Breaker is going to end up. Now, this basically means that some plans probably changed. So instead of Brock versus Gunter, I think we're getting Braun Breaker versus Gunter. And I gotta be honest, it works for me. It works, I think, since Brock cannot be in the WWE for obvious reasons. Braun Breaker could definitely replace him. Obviously, he doesn't have that star power, but I think we we, we could we could try. We could try to build the guy, and uh, I I can't take this guy seriously, right? I mean, his entrance, his performance at the Royal Rumble. That was impressive. We got Tiffany Stratton versus Meechan, so that was Tiffany's debut on SmackDown, I believe. And uh, yeah, the division is growing. It's great. She's pretty entertaining. I think she has that it factor. She looks exactly what WWE might be looking for, if you know what I mean. And of course, she ended up winning the match. And then, and then it was time for the main event. We see Roman Reigns and Roman pretty much buried everyone, which was entertaining, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining, but he buried Seth Rollins, he buried the World Heavyweight Championship. The point was, this is the championship to win and Cody should pick Roman Reigns. When he mentioned Seth Rollins, nobody reacted and he said, no pop. Exactly. <laughs> How do you recover from this? So this was hilarious. Roman was great on the microphone. The issue is like now even Roman is making fun of the world championship because it's kind of true. Of course, this is the championship to win and Cody still picks Rollins and I get it's a pretty cool story. You know, of course, there's this world championship dusty title and there's this Hulk Hogan championship, right? The corporate one, the uh, wrestling championship and the sports entertainment championship I think is the best way to describe it and it kind of makes sense for Cody to win that championship but now it just kind of feels forced right if he wants to finish the story it's the WWE title to win 
Like, the, the, winning the world championship doesn't change the fact that Dusty never became the WWE champion. Well, anyway, we see Cody Rhodes, and they talked, and they talked, and I was like, yeah, it's obvious he's picking Roman Reigns. Well, no, he said, I am coming for you, just not at WrestleMania. Apparently, he talked with a lot of legends, and he made that decision. One of these legends is someone you know really well, and we see The Rock, and the place explodes. Uh, the Rock got goosebumps, which is pretty nice that, you know, he cares about this shit, but it seemed like Cody is a child, and this was a match for grown-ups, right? He was like, no, I, I cannot beat Roman. This is all yours. This is all yours, Rocky. And honestly, he did not look happy to me. I feel like all the smiling and all that shit was fake. Again, don't get me wrong. This is a cool visual. I can't wait for the match and all that. But you know how I feel. You probably feel the same way too. You're happy about the match. Yet again, you wanted Cody to finish the story. And now WrestleMania is just 60, 70% worse than it could have been. Some of that is out of WWE's control. I understand. It just sucks. It just sucks. Again, here's your reminder. That means Drew McIntyre is probably not winning the world championship at WrestleMania, which was the perfect replacement, in my opinion, when it comes to, you know, uh, CM Punk not facing Rollins at WrestleMania. So, ah, uh, you know, it's... It's weird. It, it, there, there's some weird shit happening. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. I want to hear your thoughts. Con please, in the comments below, convince me. Like, that's what I want to see. Convince me how it's a great idea. And I'm not saying this ironic. I'm honestly interested in your takes because there's a reason why WWE are doing it, right? So I want to hear an explanation on why would Cody pick Rollins and how it's a good idea. Thank you for watching. The great one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.